In this video, we're going to take a look at something called Maxwell-Boltzmann energy distribution curves. So that's a mouthful, and we kind of need to start and remind ourselves about what happens to the rate of a reaction when we increase uh, temperature. So if we take uh, temperature and we increase temperature, then if you recall, the kinetic energy of the particles increase, and that leads to an increase in successful collisions, resulting in an increase in the reaction rate. So remember, not only do the number of collisions increase, but there's also a higher percentage of these collisions that are successful because there are a greater number of particles that have sufficient kinetic energy for the reaction to occur. So this is our collision theory, and this is how we relate it uh, to temperature. So knowing that, what is a Maxwell-Boltzmann energy distribution curve? Essentially, it's a plot of the statistical distribution of kinetic energies of uh, particles at a particular temperature. And so the way that we create these curves here is we take the proportion of particles and we plot it against kinetic energy. So at um, a particular temperature, the particles in a sample will actually have varying kinetic energies because the particles are moving randomly and colliding with one another. Um, the average kinetic energy of all the particles is um, gonna be slightly to the right of the maximum on the curve. So if we look at this random distribution, we get, um, actually, let me pull up my pen here. We get a curve coming up here. It'll peak at our temperature and then uh, come back down here. And so at this particular temperature here, this is our, our temperature, which is related to our kinetic energy. And so the average kinetic energy is just slightly shifted off to the right of the maximum of the curve. Now, if we did this and we did this at a higher temperature, then remember, as temperature increases, we increase the number of particles that have successful collisions. So we get a shift of the distribution to the right, but it also comes down. Um, so its maximum is not as high as our temperature one here. So we've got a smaller peak, and then we also have it shifted to the right with an average kinetic energy over here. Now, we can also plot activation energy on here. So say the activation energy is over at this point here. So anything beyond this point is a successful collision or at least it has enough energy for it to be a successful collision, remembering that we also need the right orientation for this to um, occur as well. So if we take a look at the area under the curve, um, it not only represents the total number of particles in the sample, but if we look specifically at the area under the curve that's above the activation energy, this gives us the number of particles that will have enough energy for successful collisions. So at lower temperatures, the majority of the particles are unreactive as the kinetic energies are lower than the activation energy. But as the temperature goes up, let's just kind of color it in here, we've got all of these now that have the enough uh, sufficient energy. So as the temperature increases, not only does the curve flatten and broaden, um, its maximum shifts to the right and the proportion of the reactive particles with kinetic energy greater than the activation energy increases, which means the rate also increases as well. So this um, temperature doesn't impact the activation energy value. It's still the same, but it does affect the average kinetic energy and the distribution of the kinetic energy of the particles. So this is how we get higher rates of reaction at higher temperatures. Now we can also take a look at this through the impact of a catalyst. So remembering that a catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of a reaction, but is not consumed in that reaction, 
and typically you get intermediates when you're using a catalyst, which is different than a transition state. So in this case, the activation energy for the uncatalyzed reaction um, is going to be much greater than the activation energy for the catalyzed reaction here. So if we look at a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, uh, energy distribution curve for this, um, in terms of the uh, distribution of particles, we're not actually changing the temperature. So the distribution or the kinetic energies of the particles doesn't actually change. What changes here is the activation energy itself. So for an uncatalyzed reaction, it's going to be much higher here. And so the number of particles under this curve is quite small. And then if we compare that to our catalyzed reaction, which has a lower activation energy, we now have all of these particles here that have enough or sufficient energy for a reaction to occur. So a lower activation energy means that more particles have enough energy to react with one another, so the reaction rate increases as well. So that's how we relate factors of a temperature or catalysts that affect the rate of reaction and what that looks like in terms of these Maxwell-Boltzmann energy distribution curves. So that's it for them for this video. We'll see you in the next one.